previously on The Code, live with the HSBC Waratahs. First thing she said to me was, I don't want to date you because you're a footballer. Michael Foley will be sitting next to me and then Chris sits next to him. Close to the line, Matthewson again, and Mono scores! By the front rows doing it on their own! Well, as I said, Al Baxter, I mean, he's just so sensible, very delicate. Oh. <laughs> pretty, pretty big blow, probably been one of your form players. Wallaby Berwick Barnes has been an instrumental part of the backline since his signing in 2010. His talents in attack and defence, combined with his leadership and a humble temperament, make him a popular and influential part of the team, and he has indeed been missed in recent games due to several concussions earlier in the season. Yeah, first couple of knocks, a few issues I suppose there, um, you know, trying to get back into training, had a few, uh, you know, dramas trying to run and, um, you know, even driving a car and a few things like that. Due to the fact that he had a history of previous concussions, um, I sought the advice of a neurologist. I've had sort of a uh, motion sickness sort of trying to run and just, um, just genuine dizziness has been my issues I suppose thus far. After the head knock he appears to be um, quite normal for a few minutes and then gets quite um, dizzy and uh, uncoordinated on his, his feet. Um, you know, I suppose we've been working through trying to diagnose this thing. You know, it could be something related to a thing called football's migraine and that's actually a, uh, a blessing in disguise really because you know, supposedly it has no long-term effects and, um, and you know, that's a good, a, good, a good thing I suppose in the current situation. When we're dealing with the brain it's a little bit how long's a piece of string. There are very few investigations you can do that can actually quantify someone's return to sport apart from time and getting them to pass certain parameters of their fitness training and then obviously the harder things which are contact and weights. You know, the last couple of weeks I've felt really good and trained well and um, you know, pretty confident heading into this game against the Rebels. Um, hopefully I can get through 80 minutes, that'll be a pretty positive thing. We're trying to do as much as we can to protect the player before we return him to, you know, what really is a battlefield. This week, the HSBC Waratahs take on the Rebels at home. The team is not in the form that it was in round one, and the New South Wales Premier Barry O'Farrell drops by to offer some encouragement to the team. Management can only hope that there will be as much attention given to the game as there is to the Premier's visit. Game day brings with it as much action off the field as on for those who take the game to the masses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we are recording. We're at four weeks out, um, and concerns about the head. How are you feeling? Because that was a real issue for you. Yeah, mate, good to get back into it now. Um, you know, I had a number of weeks off, and uh, wasn't real great early on, but I'm feeling good now, trying really well through the week, and um, excited to be back at home. An army of people and an armory of expensive equipment provide a constant stream of entertainment, detailed to the very second. Pack there, camera two, Mark, thanks, yeah. Just record a bit of camera two, make sure we've got plenty of just generic warm-ups. As long as there's 10 of the words, I... Hello, Greg Clark, how are you? Not bad, you're a little bit there, Kelly, but... Just... Sorry, you're just looking how things are going. I will start on your single, yep. 10, 10 nine, seconds of the play on. Eight, Stand by your voice seven, over. Seven, six, five seconds. Five, Stand by Charlie. Four, three, two, Music roll One. Charlie, you know? Going into Barnes. Ready mix 11. This is Ready mix 11 and mix 11 and zoom into Barnes. Let's 
time. The scrum is completed. And Burgess goes in digging and gives it now to Barnes. And Barnes double pump out to Turner. And here's Kirtley Beale, who had a real question mark about that. It's heavily strapped knee. The kick over the top from Kirtley. And it's in a touch on the far side. And now Turner, Somerville, wraps him up ball and all, but it's there for the Waratahs, and Turner pops it up, and now Pallotta now! They won't stop him, Tatafu Pallotta now. The crowd started to like it too, Kernsey. John Looney has got it at the back, this has got the crowd fired up. Tom Carter breaking away, he's five metres out. Advantage being played here for the Waratahs and they just can't get any quick ball. They take this one quickly though. And the Rebels weren't back to 10. They go out to the right and they slam right. dunk it down. Did they get the try? Yes, they did. But the tactics have paid off tonight in wet conditions have grinded themselves to a victory, a much needed victory, but you know, it's cross now, popping it up, and they're about two or three metres out. Why they go, there's the try. Dean Mum is over. The team has had a good win, and the players are mobbed by appreciative fans. Excited to have familiar heroes returning, some new ones emerging, and ever hopeful that the good form can continue. It's the start of three home games for us fellas, it's the start of a run where we're just going to get better and better over those three games. So, well done, congratulations, a really important win tonight. <clears throat> Significant milestone tonight for Burjo, 50 caps. Yeah! I'm going to cry. <laughs> I love playing with you guys. Uh, I love every minute of it and uh, I just uh, want to thank you for sharing every moment and uh, it's, just, it's magic. I really appreciate you know, all, all the efforts that, that everyone puts in. It's just such a magic team to be part of. I really appreciate it. So, thank you. Drew Mitchell has arrived back in Sydney after having surgery and two weeks rest with his family following his injury in Brisbane and reflects on rugby, recent events, and the future. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, everyone says it's every kid's dream, but it's, that's probably not realistic. But, you know, for those that certainly grab a Gilbert and run around and kick it, you know, to be able to, I guess, say that I'm a professional football player and, and go about my life in, in, that, in that manner. Um, you know, it's been a, it's been a great um, experience, but it's the times off the field that you probably miss most and uh, you know and certainly now that I'm, I'm injured it's the times um, you know the banter in the dressing sheds and you know around the place and you know on tours and things like that that you miss. Again here again is Harris and now Robinson. Oh. You know, those sort of clashes against Queensland and New South Wales are always always ones to get up for. I was pretty excited and, and, and confident about um, not only how I felt but also how the team felt going into that game so uh, I guess things t made a pretty dramatic turn. It happens in a heartbeat, someone's completely fine and then they sustain like quite a significant injury and you know you talk about putting your body on the line, like they definitely put their body on the line and any injury can occur at any time. Big Scotty Higginbotham was in, uh, was chasing in front of me and yeah, our legs tangled and I'm pretty sure the toe of my, my boot got sort of stuck in the um, into the turf and um, felt something sort of snap or pop. He had sustained a fracture dislocation of the ankle. You know, my knee was facing north and my, my toes were facing east and uh, the surgeon Peter Myers came up and, you know, with a pretty calming voice and he just sort of said, sit still, I'm going to put it back into place and, um, and then all of a sudden he's just grabbed the foot and, and started to, uh, to realign it. I guess as bad as it, as bad as it is, it, it could have been a lot worse. With his mind focused towards the end of the year, Mitchell begins the journey to recovery and is well aware of what is required. Drew will be non-weight bearing for uh, six weeks. He'll be in uh, a boot, 
At about the eight week mark then he'll have the screw taken out and he'll mobilise from there. How Drew progresses, it, it's an estimation on how you expect tissue to repair. You know, hopefully if all goes well, it's a 12 to 14 week type of injury. Uh, I can see the quad, the hamstring and the calf um, pretty much running away from me, so I'm going to have to build that up as well. There's a pretty good um, carrot at the end of it if I, uh, if I do it properly, so you know, that, that's pretty much the mindset I have to kind of go into it with and, and, uh, and, and use that as, as a goal, um, which may or may not give me a, uh, a small chance of being eligible for the World Cup anyway. Saturday evening arrives, and so do the force. After two weeks indoors, Mitchell is excited to be back amongst the action, and has plenty of company on the sideline. Tamani out wide, just getting involved. Sitting like Tamani early. He's got his fourth run. He's going well. Eh? We almost just tempt them by putting Crossy over there, tempt him to come this way. Now Barnes running to the line, getting it to Turner. So it's a dummy. And away goes inside, Lockie inside. Turner. He straightens. He's got Barnes on the inside. Go on. He doesn't give it to him. Yeah. He's pulled out by Smith. Good run, Turner. Oh, oh, Mate, all they want to do is play field position. There's another line out win at Burgess. Burgess across field. Tries to link up out wide. He didn't give it. He had three That's or right, four. Just get it back. To the left. He elected to take the yeah, we got it. Advantage being played here advantage. for the Waratahs. And Barnes, he puts the stab in for Tamani to chase, but Cummins will get back there. So he will come back, back for an easy way, three boys. points. But Chip it, bro. You're on there. Oh! Yes! That was a good option that time. Kick down oh, on. Field. The chase is on. Pocock is going to get back there first of all. And taken yes! in goal. Five metre scrum. Good thinking, Beric Barnes. You know, it's, it's a bit of a grind at the moment. I think the Western Force have probably played their hand. You can hear them just sort of calling for that territory type of game, whereas if you look at, uh, I think where our boys have gone well so far is when guys like Lockie Turner and, and Kirtley Beal with their, their first intentions to run the ball and attack and hopefully the boys come out in that second half and really keep showing that intent. Get back there and cover. Yes! And now they give away the penalty, the force. Two from four so far for Kirtley Beal. And this one oh, is off the uprights up again, but it's been picked up by Chris. And there's the first try of the match. Oh, it's a set move. <laughs> Oh, you chase those things 10 million yep. times in your career and one comes off makes it all worthwhile. Kurt yeah. Bell was aiming for that left upright. Penalty. Can't miss. Waratahs, now it goes out to Burgess and he has a run. And he was taken by Pocock and a good tackle. Barnsley in there on the hammer. Alunya, and he scored his first Super yes. Rugby try. Well, they think it's on the line. Beric Barnes is applauding. Here's Alunya Barnes coming through, it. coming through. And is that on the line? Thank you. Try to the Waratahs. Yeah. Oh, God. He loves the outside, doesn't he? Get him to run that. Get him to run it. The team is happy with the points against an opposition openly playing a territorial game. There are critics, however, waiting to have their say.
the board of directors observe their team very closely and keep an eye on the team's supporters just as carefully. Chairman Edwin Zemenchev is all too aware of the criticism that the corporation has received this year and of the transparency that the fans demand. Our paramount goal is to ensure that the organisation at all levels achieves our business plan of 10,000 members and $10 million worth of revenue in three years, contesting three semi-finals in the next three years and becoming the number one high performance centre of excellence in Australia for sporting organisations. The Waratahs are like a public company in that we invite our fans to invest time and money with us. So it's only right that we give our investors, our fans, a forum within which to express their views and challenge management and the board on its strategies and objectives moving forward for the organisation. Thank you for joining us tonight for what is a uh, memorable occasion. Tonight's not about hiding it. We're not sitting in rooms with Q&As addressing what we think might be the questions. We don't want to live in the past. We want to take this business forward. So I guess a report card that we uh, have to answer to every week is, is the competition table. So we're sitting in sixth place. We've scored 30 tries, which puts us fourth on the table. We've conceded 14. Uh, which puts us second on the table. I know that doesn't tell the whole story. It's a very brief snapshot of where we're at, and I'm sure that uh, people have some, some questions that they want to ask. As a fan, I think of the Waratahs in two ways. One, you're like family. You're always going to be my team. Uh, and, uh, and sometimes, like my children, you do things I don't like, but it's OK. <laughs> Watching rugby at SFS must be one of the most boring experiences ever. You go up to, to Brisbane, and the ground announcer was sitting there going, we are Queensland, we are red, and blah, 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 blah. And I turned to my brother and said, we're stuffed. The, uh, the people around me uh, are diehards, they're loyal followers, but their loyalty is uh, diminishing. So I'm just interested to find out what kind of things are you guys looking at? How are you gonna bring the families back in? How are you gonna get the kids back in? Because that's your future. Initial questions and truths were voiced by supporters before some root frustrations became repeatedly apparent. We don't seem to be working as a team. Pride breeds passion, and we want passionate players. I think it's a consensus that the team does not play attacking rugby. When Drew's uh, catching a, a ball now, 22, and running up towards the advancing uh, team, is his first thought to kick it or to recycle it? The words I've got here, fast ball out wide, please. The team reflected and accepted throughout the evening and corrected from time to time when necessary. We're up uh, in sponsorship by 20%. We have at least weekly meetings with all of our key sponsors. Their performances are on the line every time they take the field. Management presents to the board, so the marketing team presents, the coaching staff presents. We challenge them and we test them. They talk to us about tactics, they talk to us about players that they might be seeking to uh, recruit. We haven't got the best 15 team on the park this year at any stage. You've got different players in different positions each week and it becomes a, a little difficult to develop combinations and continuity. Our kicking hasn't been accurate, hasn't had enough purpose to it and it's something that we work very hard on, particularly over the last month, to try and improve. When you, when you receive a kick in your 22, I, I guess there's a, a really small period of time to, to sum up um, I guess your best option and if we, if we feel that the wrong option was taken we, we certainly try and communicate that on the field at the time. It's certainly the endeavour to, to play attacking rugby when the opportunity is there but it's more about executing the skill at that prof professional level uh, more so than playing one style over another style. In a confronting evening for the HSBC Waratahs there was also some helpful feedback from supporters and for the forum itself. I heard someone mention before that the culture was wrong and I don't believe that. I've always been welcomed with open arms by the players and I'd just like to congratulate you on creating a culture where that sort of thing is possible. Thank you for doing this, I would like to say that. This is an excellent idea. <laughs> on behalf of the board uh, and everyone here tonight, thanks for embracing it and we really mean that. And we are listening, things like culture, we're listening. The one thing that we've all got in common, we're passionate about rugby and we want to see it succeed. The fan forum was a unique opportunity to engage directly with our fans, something that we hadn't done before. We have some very loyal, passionate core group of supporters that feel very deeply about the performance of the HSBC Waratahs both on and off the field. That's something that we will continue to do and we'll probably do it three or four times a year.
the HSBC Waratahs prepare for battle once again. Tonight, they face the Lions, but they also face some very tough questions and have some of their own. Will their supporters turn up? Will they be heard? And will they be satisfied? Spectators have to bring something back to the game, so they need to contribute. It's a two-way thing, so this is a start of something, hopefully, that will get bigger. So Burgess gets it down now to Al Cogg, only his second start in the blue jersey of New South Wales. And now it's Kirtley Beal and Lockie Turner back on the inside. What a start, Waratahs! Oh, there's your fan for him. With the game threatening to turn, the Tami Army refuse to take notice, and the Waratahs respond with interest. Barnes out the back door, quick hands, and Nisi! Sassini and Nisi, and he scores his first try this season for the Waratahs. Advantage now, Elcock, Elcock, up towards the 22. What a run from Sakopi Kepu though. Barnes, kicking over the top, Kirtley Beal, Beal, lines up right cross, try to the Waratahs, they are playing some running rugby. A lot of now finds the man, that pass out to Carter. Midfield, the driving behind him now. Here's the kick over the top and giving chases. And Nisi gets the bounce. He's got a double. The Waratahs have got a bonus point already. Fourth try. <laughs> Gives it now to Barnes. Barnes showing and then kicking for Kingston, and Try. Kingston will score! Everything is going to plan tonight for the Waratahs. Tonight may well have been the start of a new era in Waratahs rugby. A team playing with the confidence they always intended to have. And a crowd starting to sound like the supporters they wish to be. The question now is whether or not this change can be sustained and provide the team success in South Africa and a finals berth beyond. Uh, we've, we've got to acknowledge them from the boys while we're singing and um, I think they've lifted and played amazingly tonight. Oh, they've definitely reacted well, they've run the ball, hopefully we can uh, take this into the high belt in South Africa. I think we, we did what the, the fans want us to do and hopefully hopefully we can keep them happy and keep playing attractive rugby and getting the bonus points. Oh, it's awesome. Great result for the highest five points before we head to Africa. That's what we wanted. First try tonight. And, yeah, got a few minutes out there. Like it. Some really good footy out there and uh, looking forward to getting on the plane early in the morning to uh, get out to Africa.